Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 1 plus root 3i over 2 to the power n equals 1 and we're going to be solving for n values. This time we're not going to solve for z, we're going to solve for n. And n is an integer. Also think about what would happen if n was not an integer. Anyways, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. First off, I'm thinking about a number to a power equals 1 kind of reminds me 0. Doesn't that remind you 0? Well, if n is equal to 0, this is definitely going to work because this number to the power 0 is equal to 1. Any number, including 0, right? Well, didn't you say 0 to the power 0 is undefined or indeterminate? We'll talk about that later. I'll make some videos on 0 to the power 0. Anyways, so if n is equal to 0, if n is equal to 0, then this equation will be true. But let's see how we can solve this in the general case. So, I'll be presenting probably two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, let's go ahead and write this number as 1 half plus root 3 over 2i first. And don't you recognize these numbers? 1 half is cosine of pi over 3, and root 3 over 2 is sine of pi over 3, which is also known as 60 degrees, right? So you can kind of write this as cosine of 60 degrees plus i times sine of 60 degrees, and now we're raising it to the power n, and we expect this to be 1. But since we want this to be 1, why don't you write 1 as cosine of 2 pi, or I should probably say cosine of 360 degrees, plus i times sine of 360 degrees. Radians are better, but I wanted to work with degrees here first, and then I'll talk about radians. Now, Here's what we can get from here. Remember the Moivre's theorem? That's the way I can say it, only the Moa. I can say it in the French version. Anyways, bear with me. So when you raise a complex number standard form to the nth power, you take this argument. So if you have like cosine alpha plus i sine alpha, you could also use theta, no big deal, and raise it to the power n, there's a unique answer, and that's going to be cosine of n alpha plus i times sine of n alpha. So when you raise it to the nth power where n is an integer, the answer is unique. But if you are doing to the power 1 over n, which is finding the nth roots, then there are n different answers. So that, that's not a unique answer. It's multivalued. Make sense? So let's make sure we get that right. So the question is then, what should I multiply 60 by to get 360? And the answer is easy. n equals 6 will do it, right? Now in the in the radian form, it's going to look like this. We have pi over 3 multiplied by n is supposed to equal 2 pi. And of course, in this case, n is going to be 6. So in other words, we can safely say that 1 plus root 3i over 2 to the 6th power is 1, right? And you can check that. By the way, you can check this with the binomial theorem, which is going to be fun. You can kind of take this and maybe square it first and then get an answer. And then you can raise it to the third power and that'll give you the sixth power and you should be getting one. That's going to be an interesting exercise anyways. But since this is one from the Moivre's theorem, I can also raise both sides to the power k. So kind of like this, to the power k, to the power k. But when you do, you're supposed to multiply the exponents. So one plus root three i over 2 to the power 6k is just going to be 1 again because 1 to the power k is always 1, right? And from here, you're just going to get 6k as a solution. What does that mean? Well, n equals 6k, k is an integer, so any multiple of 6 will do it because if once you get a 1, you can raise it to any other po integer power to get 1. I say integer because what happens if you take 1 and raise it to the power 1 half, then you're talking about two different values here because you're talking about the square roots of one. If you do one third, there's going to be three values, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? So you're going to increase the number of values. If you do one, one over nth power, that's basically going to give you n values because those are going to be the nth roots of unity. Make sense? 
Okay, I hope it does. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is not very much different from this. I know some people are going to complain. That it's the same thing, it's the same thing. Well, kind of, but I still wanted to show you. So, we have an equation that gives us this. Okay. And now, I want to separate these again. 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And now I want to write this in polar form. Remember, we were able to write this as cosine of pi over 3 plus i times sine of pi over 3 because that's what the 1 half and root 3 over 2 gives us, right? You could also check the tangent. Tangent is b over a, and that's going to give you root 3. And it's in the first quadrant because both the x and y values or a and b values are positive. That tells you that the quadrant is important here because there are two angles between 0 and 2 pi whose tangent equals root 3. Make sense? So you got to make sure where you are. Now, under these conditions, we can go ahead and go with the polar form, e to the power i times pi over 3. So this is uh, using basically Euler's formula because Euler told us cosine theta plus i sine theta can be written as e to the power i theta. And it's a beautiful, beautiful formula. You know why? Because you can basically replace theta with different things, such as pi. If you do, you're going to get negative 1. So this is kind of like an amazing equation, don't you think? It brings together some transcendental numbers and an imaginary number and an integer, so on and so forth. Anyways, you can create lots of different identities, square both sides. You're going to get e to the power 2 pi i equals 1, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's a different story, but that's not our story. It's a different one. So now let's go ahead and do this. We got 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. We were able to write it as e to the power i times pi over 3. Now we're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power n. Let's do it. Now this is kind of nice because we have the rectangular form or standard form on the left hand side and the polar form, the Euler form on the right hand side. Now this gives us the following. We do know that this equals 1, so forget about the n thing and focus on this. And now here's what I want to do. i pi n over 3 e to the power of that equals 1. How am I going to solve this? Again, n equals 0 works, but that's not what I want. I want the general solution. Here's what I can do. I can write 1 as a complex number in polar form, and that will be something like e to the power 2 pi ki. Remember, I told you e to the power pi i is negative 1, e to the power 2 pi i is 1, and you can basically raise it to any power k, as long as k is an integer. Zalen, right? <laughs> okay, great. So now we get the following. i pi n over 3 equals 2 pi k i. Go ahead and cancel out the pi, cancel out the i. We end up with n equals 6 k. k is an integer, n is an integer, n is basically a multiple of 6, as we said before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.